In a few hours, Christendom will symbolically be celebrating the rising of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And in the Ashanti region, the drums will be rolling at the palace, that is Minchia, when the kingdom celebrates a very symbolic festival. And on those two key things, we welcome you to News at 10 on TV3. My name is Martin Isiedu Dati, and later in the bulletin, we will be bringing you some very interesting discussion regarding the use of cannabis and the call for it to be legalized in the country and whether or not Ghana as a country is ready. Do we have the logistics and the personnel to do that? That details, uh, that discussion will be held here on News at 10. Before that though, here are the details and highlights of stories we have for you tonight. Scores of traders of the Kumasi Central Market are still counting their losses barely 24 hours after fire gutted their shops, destroying property running into thousands of CDs. The cause of the Friday night fire that swept through parts of the market is unknown. The fire is the second major inferno after the market got burnt six years ago. Health delivery at Kintampo's 125-bed municipal hospital is under threat due to worn-out equipment and lack of space. The hospital, which is the biggest health facility between Techiman and Tamale, needs expansion and ultra-modern equipment to deliver quality health care. The fate of pupils at the Bola DA Primary School in the Pandai district of the northern region hangs in the balance as they are not taught by teachers. The teachers abandon the classroom for farming activities. Barely a year on, since TV3 visited the school, it seems nothing has changed as the lack of supervision puts the lives of over a hundred children in the balance. All is set as the people and chiefs of Ashanti prepare to mark Akwesidae Kesie. The festival, one of the biggest traditional festivals of the Ashanti people, also falls within the planned celebration to mark the 20-year rule of the Ashanti Hini Utunfose to II. The festivities would see the display of rich tradition from various quarters of the Ashanti kingdom. So those are the major stories making headlines here in Ghana. Time now for the big one. Thank you for staying with us. Now, the Rastafari Council of Ghana is calling on government to legalize the use of cannabis. They believe that um, uh, there is legalizing cannabis presents a lot more health benefit and would also create jobs in the country. The Rastafari Council of Ghana has been advocating for the legalization of cannabis for years now. Its latest conference on the theme, Defending Our Human Rights, highlighted key health benefits of cannabis as well as its economic potential. The group is convinced decriminalizing the use of cannabis for medical, economic and recreational benefits is the way to go. President of the Rastafari Council of Ghana, Uhuma Bosco Okansi, said some ailments can be treated and managed by the use of cannabis. According to him, cannabis are beneficial in the healing of cancer, glaucoma, pain relief and many more, and it is a natural aphrodisiac without side effects. Director of Football at the Rastafari Council, Nana Kweku Ajima, noted that cannabis legalization in Ghana will attract huge investment opportunities and boost internal revenue. Also, cultivation and distribution of large-scale cannabis farms into production will curb emission and fight climate change. One kilogram of hemp today is £6,000, period. In the United States, and other countries, the development and the rise of the marijuana and the hemp business has moved so rapidly. This is a major game changer, a major game changer. And it's time now that government take us serious and start talking to us. 
The Women Commissioner of the Rastafari Council, Empress Safi Mawina, said that Ghanaians must capitalize on the benefits of cannabis than fighting against its use. Ghana is spending a lot of scarce resources fighting an innocent plant which can be cult cultivated and commercialized to provide alternative sources of income for farmers. It would be better to decriminalize the plant and channel all that money into improving healthcare delivery, education, and the plethora of socioeconomic challenges facing Ghana today. From the nutritional perspective, Cannabis should be included in the list of superfoods alongside spinach, kale, and broccoli. Why? Because raw cannabis triggers the release of antioxidants, which effectively get rid of damaged cells in the body. Lawyer for the Rastafari Council, George Tete Wayo, said the laws of the country should be applicable to every Ghanaian and not a sector of a society. Article 12 of the 1992 Constitution provides for the protection and enjoyment of fundamental human rights. It's a must. Thank you. Article 17 provides for equality before the law. No discrimination against race, gender, creed. So if one article says fundamental rights are a must, and one says you must not discriminate, then it seems something is not being done. A such forum is one that needs to send a signal to the government that if you have the loss, begin to recognize the loss. All right, so we've been joined in studio by Ahuma Bosco Okanse, uh, popularly known not only in showbiz but globally and countrywide as Daddy Bosco. Now, he's uh, the first uh, chair of the Rastafarian Contential Council. Good evening, sir. Thank you for your time. Good evening, sir. Um, to start with, I mean, this is not the first time we are hearing of a call for cannabis or weed or marijuana, as some may call it, uh, to be legalized in Ghana. Do you think as a country, and where we have come in terms of our laws, our democracy, our development, we are ready for weed to be legalized in Ghana? Thank you very much for this opportunity. Now, what we're calling for is an, an opening up of the space for a conversation. Right. Um, it's important that as a nation, we take a stock of what is happening globally in the area of medicinal marijuana, industrial marijuana, and then economic. Because um, one of the speakers today at um, the press conference spoke about the impact of the hemp industry. For instance, as we're speaking in a country like the United States, they're looking at um, how to use hemp crete to build. They're looking at how to use hemp to make wood. They've realized that um, hemp wood is one of the best forms of wood. So what we're calling for is an opening up of the conversation. In Ghana, you have a lot of, um, a friend of mine the other day was calling them Kweku Anansi stories, stories about um, the inimical effects of marijuana, etc., etc. What we're saying is it's time to move away from fables, myths, and opinions to scientific analysis, to research. But so, is, 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 aren't the fears of those who are probably bringing up these fables and stories, as you put it, aren't their fears justified? Because growing up, all of us were told we shouldn't go near anybody that smoked weed or sold weed and that it was bad and would make you mad and lose your mind. Are these stories not true? Is there no connection between the smoking <laughs> see, and the uh, mental Listen, that's what I'm saying that, for instance, if you go to Washington, D.C. today, that's the seat of the United States government. You can go and buy legal marijuana. Are they not going mad? So we're saying let's open up the space. Let's do scientific research that will either justify or otherwise, all these um, stories and opinions. Because, you see, there's evidence of the fact that people are using marijuana for medicinal purposes. It's scientifically proven. Okay. The economic benefits are there to be seen. The industrial uses, people are wearing clothes made out of hemp. hemp. People are using hemp in, in, in all kind of products from cosmetics
to the fashion industry was saying that open up the space and uh, i'll tell you something one of the easiest things the government could do is to set up a commission to look at the pros and cons of all these and you're things. sure they are likely to get more cons than pros i tell you something my brother um globally Look at what's happening in the economy of California. 2.4 billion US dollars in tax revenues. Mm. The clear case studies Ghana can learn from. Uh, you see, sometimes when you're doing something after a lot of people have blazed that trail, you have the benefit of hindsight okay. to learn from their mistakes. Look at what's happening in Israel. Mm. Israel currently has one of the biggest marijuana industries in the world and it's no secret I, i'd want to also take out from where you've left off and we're looking at data in preparing for this interview we also came across data from um uh, the world health organization that said that 62 percent of persons that used weed and this data as recent as 2015 62 percent of persons that used marijuana were more likely to move on to other hard drugs like heroin and cocaine. So if we legalize it again as a country, uh, do we listen. have those, do we have the barriers <laughs> to make sure that we're able to truly monitor? Because I'm sure you're looking at legalizing and regulating its use, isn't it? Um, you see, when you, 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 you pick certain statistics out of context, then you, you use words like likely. That is why we're saying, let us expose these to proper scientific analysis so that we can see, are these things... Because, you see, when you say someone is likely to, it doesn't mean someone will. Mm. Do you get it? And, <clears throat> excuse me, for some of us, you want to do a research that will provide some evidence of what is happening globally and what should happen. But, but, you, but, I, I, I'm coming. Uh -huh. One of the mistakes people make is when we talk about marijuana decriminalization or accessing the economic benefits, people's minds go right away to smoking. Mm. And we want to move the conversation just beyond smoking. Uh -huh. As we're speaking, people are using edibles. People are using, what you call it, um, marijuana and nutraceuticals. Mm. People are using it for many. I want us to move the conversation just beyond smoking. That sometimes it to, it looks sounds like too if, petty. Yes, it looks Be as if that's where everybody drives towards when they hear weed or marijuana they because all that's look the populist them. thinking and that's okay. why we're saying let's open up the conversation and look at the uses we're talking about not just the recreational use but the medicinal because so um at a press conference today one brother gave a testimony of um, his child who had convulsions and things and he was saying when he started to use cbd this cannabis oil the child witnessed tremendous improvement. That's one of the things that convinced people like Dr. Sanjay Gupta of CNN. CNN he yes. was an ardent critic of medicinal marijuana until he saw cases of kids who were suffering over 30 epileptic seizures in a day who were miraculously healed through the use of cannabis oil. So, uh, I mean, taking off again from the fact that globally there are statistics to back scientific research backing why we needed to legalize and regulate it. Do you think that we can just pick and implement those same uh, research and data from elsewhere? Isn't our system different from theirs and isn't probably our marijuana maybe stronger than theirs in terms of the contents that we you have? You see, that is why I, 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 right from the onset, I've been hammering on the need for research. Research. So we can do so our that local we've done research. localized research. And look, there are case studies, there are models globally we can look at. Because this is not kid stuff. You're talking about a multi-billion industry. Mm. It's important. And for, for me, what's most exciting is that His Excellency is talking about Ghana Beyond Aid. That means you're looking at a situation where you can generate your own revenue mm. so that you're not going cup in hand begging for budgetary supplements and things like that. Why don't and, and, you... And do, do we as a country have potent... I mean, 
again, I was also quite overwhelmed by the statistics and data we have found. For instance, the U.S. Uh, is using between six to nine billion dollars in fighting the use of cannabis in some of the states that have not legalized it. Whereas a research by Grandview Research says that in the between the next five to six years, global reach for the sale and use of cannabis was going to hit about $1.4 billion. So there seemed to be a global acceptance sort of of it. But locally, how good and potent is our content that if we do produce either the bit about medicinal, the bit about clothing, the bit about the fashion and the one for uh, the, the recreational, do we have a market for it? And can we make as much money we think we can make? Um, you see, one thing is Canada has legalized cannabis, particularly for the uh, what you call it, health industry. And everybody knows that the climate in Canada is not conducive to growing. So they're, um, they're sourcing from Jamaica. And everybody knows Jamaica is an island. Right. <laughs> and Ghana is a tropical country that, that, that has the right climate and conditions. It's high, t and, and that's why we keep saying that, look, this is, this is for government to lead, take the initiative. Well, government can also, um, what you call it, um, empower saying private sector players to do this. But there's the need for us to do the research. The markets are there. Let us access these markets so that we can leverage the economic mm -hmm. benefits. Do, do you have a sample with you? Would want to see how, uh, I mean, clearly is, is, there is a bit, again, for recreation and then what people can use. Do you have a sample? Just want to ask a question oh, on that. And I, I, for I that, TV3, you should have written to the Ministry of Health to, to give us samples. <laughs> to, to go ahead and okay, to but then there. if someone goes across the, the, I mean, the road or the ghetto, or wherever he can purchase it, the use of it for medicinal reasons, how can that person, do you need a medical, line, um, a medical permit to, for instance, if you have a migraine or you have a certain kind of condition where you think that smoking or using it can help, how does that person get certification now that the country has Ill it is illegal in Ghana? So in Ghana, you cannot get medicinal marijuana for uh, because the Ministry of Health is the people who have to give you that license. Um, however, um, for friends who've come in from the United States, they have their medical marijuana licenses. Okay. And um, it, it's like prescription. You need a doctor to certify that you need it. Uh, for instance, in Israel, it's officially given to soldiers who've gone through the war post-traumatic stress symptoms. They give it to them to, you know, calm their anxiety, their depression, right. et cetera, et cetera. You need um, a doctor to, 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 to certify. Yeah. before you can use it medicinally. That's right. Okay. I, I'm sure this debate uh, and conversation will go on for the next few years. Hopefully, uh, it will get to the higher levels of government and then the discussion will take it from there. But thank you very much for making time to speak with us. Uh, Daddy Bosco has been helping us understand why they are asking and calling for uh, legalizing marijuana. But are asking for research to be done locally to justify why as a country we can benefit from it. Thank you very much once again and uh, I'm sure we'll continue this discussion. This is News at 10 on TV3. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Welcome back to News at 10 on TV3. Inmates of the James Camp Prison here in Accra are referred in, uh, uh, in taxis where they are taken in. Uh, Ill, let me take the story again. Inmates are the Jamestown uh, uh, military prison here in Accra are taken in taxis when they fall ill due to the absence of official vehicles. The facility, again, has no health personnel to attend to the health needs of the over 300 inmates and personnel of the prison service and their dependents. Here's a report by Peter Kwao Adato. The James Camp Prison here in Accra was established some 71 years ago to serve as a skills development center and transition camp between the main prisons and the public. The camp receives inmates from Insum, Ho, 
Kofreidia, Uniba, and other nearby prisons to be reformed prior to their release from the prison system. Apart from challenges with logistics to adequately equip these inmates with skills that will make them better citizens, the camp lacks health care facility to respond to basic health conditions. This infirmary here lacks medicals as well as a qualified medical personnel to respond to the growing health needs of inmates, prison officers and other dependents. We have only one medical officer, the ward assistants uh, who are always on the ground, but by the tenets of the Ministry of Health, those are not qualified to treat. Just one doctor serving headquarters, James Camp, training school, senior correction center. Inmates who are taken ill are referred to nearby health facilities in public transport. And that small intervention between when an incident occurs, how you manage transport and convey the person to a hospital of professional attention is very key. An appeal by management of the camp prompted the donation of assorted medical equipment and medication by the Cedar Mountain Chapel at East Lagon worth 30,000 cities to the James Camp prison. The items include two multi-purpose hospital bed, drip stands, BP apparatus and glucometers. The Reverend Stephen Wengam is the head pastor of the Cedar Mountain Assemblies of God Church. I mean, the Cedar Mountain Chapel Assemblies of God board members are seeing any members. You have a shamo, now you have your donation to help refurbish your infirmary. An ex-convict turned pastor, Reverend David Mercies, admonished the inmates against bad behaviors. Because whatever we do, there is always a reward for it. So we have to be careful the way we do our things. And if they yield their hearts to do the things that are right within the system, there's the likelihood that when they come out of prison, they'll become responsible people in society like me. And that's how we wrap the bulletin up. My name is Martin Siedudati. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. To have a good evening and as always, stay positive. Bye for now.